Good morning and welcome to Countryside Christian Church on this Labor Day Sunday. Uh, you need to bear with us a little bit this weekend. There's uh, a number of little minor details that are causing problems. The organ's not working, some of the lights are not working, so the uh, facilities people have got to be working pretty hard in the next couple of weeks. But we'll manage, we can see. So would you um, uh, please fill out the uh, attendance card in the pre rack and put that in the collection plate when it comes around. And now let's um, listen to Bill do the prelude on the piano instead of the organ. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. That's beautiful on the piano, even though it's not the organ. <laughs> Would you join me now in the call of worship found in your bulletins? <clears throat> sing out, sing out with joy to the God who gives us strength. Shout out, shout out praises to the Lord our God. Let us listen carefully for the word and let us be willing to follow where God leads. Give us strength that we may praise you. Help us to listen and guide us in your ways. Amen. Now, if you'll stand for the opening hymn, Holy, 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 number four, all verses.
Would you pray with me? Almighty and living God, as we come to worship this Labor Day weekend, we ask that you might be present to us and that we are present to you. Quiet our minds, still our hearts, that we can fully attend to you in our worship. Strengthen our lives, inspire our spirits. In your living waters flow endless grace. Now let us pray the words that your son taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. change in the order of service this morning. We'll go straight to the life of the community and there are a number of things going on. Uh, the quilt in the foyer was requested by Deborah Browser for Cindy Coleman who's having neck surgery for a pinched nerve. So stop and tie a, quilt, a, a knot in the quilt for the prayer quilt. Uh, <clears throat> tomorrow is an open house at Tall Oaks and your last opportunity to swim for the summer. So everybody's invited to go out there from uh, three to seven, swimming from three to five, worship a campfire, hot dogs and s'mores from six to seven. Ought to be a fun day. Um, <clears throat> the Disciples Women, <clears throat> next Thursday, September 6th at 10, Disciples Women Fellowship invites you to a new year of programming. They've chosen relevant and interesting speakers that will, we, they believe, challenge you to better mission-oriented Christians. Meet in the fireside room where the head of cross lines will tell of many opportunities for service from that group. Every month, some countrysiders go to cross lines to serve meals for needy people, and some individuals help with cross lines uh, Christmas store. But there are many, many other ways to serve Come and find out what some of those are. Following the program, short business meeting, be a home-cooked meal for seven bucks in the fellowship hall. Hope you'll join them. Call the church for a reservation. Remember, Thursday, 10 a.m. in the fireside room. Um, <clears throat> the Christian Church of Greater Kansas City will be holding their biannual assembly at Community Christian Church on the Plaza, Saturday, October 6th. They have um, invited Reverend Britt Barron, who is a very dynamic speaker. We we'll think you will really get something out of her, her, uh, her sermon. Uh, starts at 11 o'clock with a display of different uh, uh, activities uh, and those of you who might have a ministry you'd like to expose to the region, there'll be a, some tabletop display spaces available. Check with the office on how to uh, set up your display. So th uh, Saturday, October 6th from 11 to 5. Highly recommend it. <clears throat> the, let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. <laughs> All right. I think we're ready for the prayer song, hymn number 102, verses 1 and 2.
as we come to our prayer time this morning, how many of you enjoyed walking through those new doors this week? <laughs> those doors were made possible by a very generous uh, donation that covered the entire cost of those doors from Betty Winters in memory of her granddaughter Paige who was killed in a plane crash 12 years ago and her husband Art who died also 12 years ago. So our prayers as we open our prayer time this morning that God would bless all who pass through those doors. Oh Lord, hear our prayers. Uh, Cameron is still patiently awaiting surgery, getting better and stronger. Less pain, very good. So for continued strength for Cameron, <coughs> oh Lord, hear our prayers. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I asked for special prayers for a good clergy colleague of mine, uh, Gordon Wilhite. Uh, I was Gordon's mentor in his uh, process of becoming a uh, licensed minister at Coffeeville Christian Church. Uh, Gordon was diagnosed a little less than a year ago with a very rare form of hepatitis. And uh, he is awaiting, he is on the transplant list, but uh, right now he is in the hospital at KU uh, with kidney issues as well. So for strength and comfort for Gordon, oh Lord, hear our prayers. Um, I don't know whether a lot of you didn't get in here before we stopped the announcement slide. But um, Annette uh, had an amazing turnaround this past week. For the first time since her accident, she was able to put weight on her left leg and to stand up on her own. And so uh, there you go. There's a picture. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> so she is at Menorah. Uh, and I can't read the number. Oh, 433. 433 visiting hours from 9.30 in the morning to 9 o'clock at night, and she would love to have you visit. So for continued strength for Annette, oh, oh Lord, Lord, hear our prayers. She told me that her goal is to be back at work by the last day of this month. <laughs> if anybody can do that, it would be Annette. <laughs> so are there other prayer concerns from our church family? Barb? Mm -hmm. Kansas had increased numbers after his bone marrow transplant. The second Great. one is taking. Very good. So that is a, a blessing. Yeah. Steve actually was my district minister when we served the church in Southeast Kansas. Yeah. So for continued strength and improvement for Steve, oh, oh Lord, Lord, hear our prayers. prayers. Join me now in a, a time of prayer. Gracious God, you bless us in so many ways through generous gifts, through incredibly gifted surgeons and doctors, through the still small voice that speaks to us, and through your presence here with us this morning. You've heard our prayers, our joys, and our concerns. We lift them up to you and we trust you to answer those prayers. Gracious God, we do thank you for your presence here with us this morning. Open our hearts, help us to learn, to learn the words, the lesson that you would have us learn today. Help us learn that we can't be just people who hear your word, but we must be people who works your word as well. We thank you so much for that incredible gift of teaching that you give us in your words. We humbly ask all these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen.
Sheila. Turn with me, if you would, in your Bibles to the book of James, chapter 1. We'll be reading verses 17 through 27 while you're turning there. Uh, two of my favorite college football teams won yesterday. Um, South Carolina won pretty easily, and uh, I always tell people that uh, my favorite three teams are South Carolina, whoever plays Georgia, and whoever plays Tennessee. And uh, so West Virginia came through and beat Tennessee pretty good. And KU tried their best to lose that game. K-State. Oh, K-State. KU did lose their game, but that's nothing new. So, uh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. That's your weekly football update. Um, here from the book of James, incredible instructions on how we are to live the Christian life, beginning with verse 17. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. For your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves and on going away immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty and perseverance, being not hearers who forget but doers who act. They will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues, but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. So ends the reading of God's word. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, may the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart be holy and acceptable to you. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. How many of you remember learning how to drive a car or a truck? When I was in my teens, there were no driver schools, no driver's education or no class that you could take. I learned to drive on a tractor first, and then I graduated to a five-ton flatbed truck. And finally, my dad would let me drive the car home from church. I think I was about seven or eight. <laughs> There's advantages to growing up in the country. <laughs> finally, I reached the age where I could legally drive, so I made that first trip to the DMV and took my first driver's test. When I passed both the written and the driver's test, I just knew for sure that I had grown up. Things are a little different today. Today, most kids in high school take a driver's education class. Someone other than their parents has the honor and privilege of teaching teens how to drive. <laughs> what if you skip all that hassle, though, and just YouTube how to drive? That's exactly what an eight-year-old boy in Ohio did one recent Sunday night. Our young innovator had a problem. Mom and dad had fallen asleep early, leaving this young boy and his four-year-old sister awake and alone. <laughs> the two of them began to really crave McDonald's, but they just didn't want to wake up mom and dad. And those golden arches were just about a mile and a half down the road, too far to walk in the dark, but the young boy did what any Generation Z kid would do when confronted with such a conundrum, he turned on the computer, went to YouTube, and typed in how to drive a car. 
after carefully, this is a true story, not made up. You can Google it. <laughs> after carefully watching what to do, he robbed his piggy bank, found the car keys, and off he and his sister went to McDonald's. A little later, the police said that the boy had obeyed all the traffic laws, didn't hit a single thing, and drove effortlessly, effortlessly through town as though he had been driving for years, all because he watched a few minutes of video instruction on YouTube and did precisely what it said. That's the important part. He did exactly what the video told him to do. Our pint-sized adventurer seems to have grasped early on what many of us grasp later in life. That is, on the internet, someone somewhere has created a video to show you how to do what you're about to attempt. Whether it's repair for your home or your car, how to put on makeup, learning self-defense, making dinner, driving a car, all you need to do is look it up on the world's most popular video site, YouTube, and soon you'll be an expert yourself. Even, even if it's expertise on the best way to manage your pet possum. Because apparently possums like to be massaged. Something else you can only learn on YouTube. There are literally millions of these tutorial videos, most produced by average people who have learned a particular skill or talent, and they simply want to share their expertise with others. It is a crowdsourcing experience or expertise that makes it possible for the most mechanically inept person to fix a faucet or make just plain old macaroni and cheese become a gourmet meal. Of course, all this instructions depends on the viewer's willingness to experiment and put the information they learn actually into practice. Without that, well, it's just another internet time waster. Now, in biblical times, they didn't have YouTube. Most of their learning was accomplished by watching someone else model the activity in question, face to face, or by receiving a letter from a distant instructor, which took way longer than even dial-up internet service so James wrote this letter to the Jewish Christian community who were caught up in the social tensions of mid first century where outbreaks of violence and insurrection were taking place in Jerusalem and vicinities, a conflict that would culminate in the Jewish revolt of ACE 66 to 70, which resulted by the way in the final ultimate destruction of the temple in Jerusalem. In fact, the entire Roman world was dealing with unrest including economic problems, food shortages, the rapid turnover of Roman emperors that led to an erratic government policy toward Christians and Jews and others. The problem before the church in this time of uncertainty, just as well as today, can be summed up in a statement something like this. How do we remain a faithful Christian community in the midst of such a time of trial and temptation? The author of this letter wrote to encourage his brothers and sisters and you and me to give instructions on how to navigate in difficult times. First of all, faithfulness must be practiced. This letter reads like a series of random tutorial videos on the Christian life. James makes it very plain that no amount of instruction matters unless it is first put into practice. James wants the church to become experts, not only in hearing God's word, but in doing God's word. Blessed is anyone who endures temptation. Such a one has stood the test and will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised those who love him. Remember that crown of life from a couple of weeks ago? James saw the current situation as a time of testing for the Christian community, but also an opportunity to demonstrate faithfulness. Again, we can certainly say the same thing about the church today. Faithfulness will often be challenged and tested. For James, this time of testing was not something that God had just thrown out in front of the people to break them down. Far from it, in fact. James views this testing as a gift from God. 
that God has given to his people, a charge to shine in the midst of a dark world as a community of the new creation that God has brought forth in the death, the resurrection, and ascension of Jesus. Faithfulness is rooted in the trustworthiness of God. In the Greco-Roman world of James's day, many people consulted astrology and alignment of the stars as a kind of first century YouTube to help determine their course of action. James called the church to remember that they have been given the perfect gift of God, the father of lights and the one who actually created the stars in the first place. Unlike the changeable nature of events in the present world, there is no variation or shadow due to change in God's nature. God and the word of God are the only reliable sources of information for the church, which God created in fulfillment of his own purpose and birthed by the word of truth from verse 18 in our scripture reading for today. What I did not mention about YouTube is there's no absolute proof that any of those videos work. Some of them do, some of them don't. One thing we know about God's word though, is it is always accurate, it is always right, it is always truth. James set this up as a direct contrast to the other kind of birth people have under sin. A birth conceived in desire, bringing forth sin, which in turn gives birth to death from verse 15. Now, you can actually go on YouTube and look up how to give birth. And you can see it live and in real right there. I mean, it's just there. Just in case you are ever faced with having to deliver a baby. I wish I could have had access to YouTube when I was in high school because I had to deliver two before I graduated from high school. However, for James, the only birth that really matters is the one that happens when we are born anew by God's word of truth, which prepares us to be first fruits of this new creation. Faithfulness is also grounded in the word of God. With that word of truth in mind, James then turns to the problem at hand and lays down a quick take on how to manage oneself while the world seems to be spinning out of control. Today it is very tempting to give in to anger, revenge, and nasty words. We see it every day in the news and in the social media. While there are tons of instructional videos on YouTube, there are plenty of folks who use that platform to rant and spew venom about some person, some cause or issue, especially given the political climate in which we live today. James would say, however, that this is like trying to deal with a problem without taking the time to read the directions first. My dad used to say more than once to me, well, when all else fails, read the directions. Let everyone be, I want you to listen to these directions that Paul gives us. They're so simple, yet so profound. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to anger, for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. And I left out slow to speak. Oh my goodness, how much better my life could have been if I would have just listened to that second part about being slow to speak. James instructs his brothers and sisters to get rid of that kind of reactivity and to instead welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. The same word of truth that gives birth also guides the words and actions of the one whom God has saved. And faithfulness puts the word into noticeable and vision, visible action. So then how does the word get activated in our lives? James says that we have to practice it, but how? How do we practice it? Well, old golfing legend Sam Sneed once was asked how he practiced. And he said, well, when I am not playing competitive golf in a tournament, I hit 500 golf balls every day on the driving range. If I only hit 400, the next competitive round I play, I can tell it. If I only hit 300, everyone else can tell it. 
practice, practice, practice. James puts it nicely when he writes, be doers of the word, not merely hearers who deceive themselves from verse 22. The purpose of receiving instruction, receiving the word of truth is to put the information into practice. Let me give you a personal example. About a month ago, I took my car in to be serviced. The service tech said I needed to replace the cabin air filter. It would cost about $150. Well, I thought, that's a lot of money to replace an air filter. I can do it for much less. I mean, I'm pretty good at when it comes to fixing things. So I went home and, you guessed it, YouTubed how to replace the, air, the cabin air filter in my car. And guess what? It's not as easy as I thought it was going to be. I watched step-by-step -step instructions on how to replace that filter, but so far I have not taken it up on myself to replace that filter and I can tell you that if and when I do I will download that video on my iPhone and have it sitting there in my car and do it step by step it may well be worth $150 not to do it myself <laughs> James says the same thing happens when we only hear the Word of God because see so far I hadn't put into practice what I saw on YouTube it's though we look at ourselves in a mirror briefly and then walk away and almost instantly forget what we look like. Well, you see, in James's day, only the wealthy people had access to a mirror in the ancient world anyway, and then it was usually made of bronze, not very effective. Forgetting one's image was easy to do in James's day. But when we fail to take the word we have received and put that word instantly into practice, building a kind of spiritual muscle memory. We forget the God who created us. And God created us to be in fellowship with each other, to teach others. That's our job. That's what we're supposed to do. And on the other hand, if we keep our focus on the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere in the midst of trial, being hearers and doers, we will be blessed in our doing. In fact, it is in doing the word that matters the most for James from verse 25. And finally, faithfulness is easier when we are in fellowship with the community. Some YouTube tutorials don't quite convey the information in a way that is easy to follow. For example, try tying a bow tie while watching a video looking at a chart or an example. It is difficult because you are looking at a mirror image that forces you to do everything backwards. To tie a bow tie effectively, you need to be standing beside somebody, watching them tie that tie, and then you can do it much easier the same way that they do. It is one thing to conceptualize the process. It is quite another to execute it. I think our triplets learned that when they went to the golf course to try to play golf. And then we went home and they watched the big guys on TV and said, how do they make it look so easy? Practice, practice, practice. The same is true for real religion, writes James. It is not simply about running the mouth and declaring one's faith as a matter of intellectual belief or lashing out at those who challenge you. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God, on the other hand, is a religion that is lived out in the way we live our lives. It is a religion that cares for the most vulnerable people, widows and orphans, James writes, and keeps oneself unstained by the world. It is religion, in other words, that uses the model of Jesus for both its belief and its practices, like tying a bow tie or changing a cabin air filter. There are some things YouTube might not teach us very well YouTube cannot teach you to be a follower of Jesus. Oh, sure, it can teach you the principles of discipleship. But to really learn it, you have to have someone live it out in front of you, someone that can guide you along the way. Information alone just won't get the job done. It takes imitation as well. In closing, I have up here a little book that I purchased at a bookstore in Wichita back in 1999 for $1. The only reason I purchased this book was because inside the front cover of this book, handwritten, it says, Aunt Susie from Ludie, Christmas 
1901. I remember I bought this book in 1999. That told me this book is over 100 years old when I bought it. I had no idea what this book was, but the title of it is Imitation of Christ. Little did I know what a gem this book really is. What I have since learned about this book is Thomas A. Kempis, a well-known Catholic theologian, wrote this book. It is a compilation of his thoughts on what it means to imitate Christ. This book was originally written in Latin in 1420 and has been it, and you can still buy copies of it today. It is an incredible book. Should not that be our goal today to be an imitation of Christ? Isn't that what what it means to truly be a Christian? While we can YouTube it to find out such a wide variety of things, the best way to learn how to imitate the life of Christ is to spend time in the Bible. James gives us a good set of instructions as how we are to imitate Christ. But in addition to written instructions, we learn best by example. That's why we need to be in community, in fellowship with each other. In our culture today, a culture of hate and divisiveness, we must see the opportunity to be shining stars that reflect God's glory rather than seeking ways to strike out in harsh reality. We shine most brightly when we are doing God's word in a way that causes others to see Christ in and through us. An eight-year-old learned to drive by watching a video and then grabbed the keys, all motivated by the need of a prospect of a happy meal. This morning, what is it that motivates you? What is it that will cause you to want to imitate Christ more today than you did yesterday? May we be motivated to take the instruction we have been given by James and to put his words into practice right here, right now. If and when we can do that, God only knows where our work will take us. May it be so. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, we do thank you that you gave us step-by-step instructions. Help us, your children, not to sit idly, but to truly be doers of your words. Amen. Will the deacons come on forward, please? Well, we just had a lesson in what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be doing and not hearing. And one of the things that we're supposed to be reminded of is that all the gifts came from above. So we need practice. We need practice. We reach in here and we put it in the plate because God loves that you're a forgiver. So let's have our collection this morning.
we do thank you for these gifts, gifts this morning given from our heart. Help us, your children, to use these gifts for your glory right here, right now. Bless both the gift and the giver. In Jesus' name, amen. As we prepare our hearts for communion, join me as we sing Bread of the World in Mercy Broken, page 387. We'll sing all the verses. This past week, I was privileged to be called to go out to eat with two different groups. We sat around the table and we fellowshiped and we had fun. We had a conversation going that it was really neat. And so it is a privilege to do things like that, but it's a greater privilege together here at this table and hear the words of Christ, do this in remembrance of me. So I ask that you clear your minds of what happened last week, what's going to happen this week. Let the Holy Spirit guide you as you touch this bread and this wine and take nourishment for your soul because it is a privilege to come to this table. Now shall we ask, go to God in prayer? <clears throat> <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for all that you do for us, for the instructions you have left us to follow, and for the opportunity to gather around this table and refresh ourselves and learn to be doers. In thy holy name we pray, amen. We are the Christian Church, Disciples of Christ, a movement for wholeness in a fragmented world. As part of the one body of Christ, all are welcome at this table as God has welcomed us. For it was on that night so long ago when Jesus gave himself up for you, for me. He took bread. He blessed it. He broke it. He said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the meal, he took the cup, the third cup, the cup of redemption. He said, this is the cup of the new covenant, my blood poured out just for you. Drink from it, all of you. For as often as we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim his death until he comes once again.
Would you join me in our prayer of dedication? We thank you, God, for renewing our faith, strengthening our hope, and kindling our love. Let all we do be done in love. Amen. You may be here this morning having never accepted Christ as your Savior, or you may be here seeking a new church home. I would invite you to come as we stand and sing our hymn of dedication, O Christ the Way, the Truth, the Life, page 432. We'll sing all the verses. share just two little verses out of this book. Remember, these were written in 1420. Hear what he writes about the friendship with Jesus. When Jesus is present, all is well, and nothing seems difficult. But when Jesus is not present, everything is hard. When Jesus speaks not inwardly to us all, either um, other comfort is nothing but if Jesus speaks but one word, we feel great compassion. Words to go home with. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, we do thank you for all of the ways that you teach us. Help us, your children, to always be looking for ways to do your words always. Watch over us as we part and go our separate ways. Keep us safe above all. Help each one of us to live our lives this week in such a way that others will truly see you in us. And all God's people said, Amen. and don't forget First Friday. Yeah. <laughs>